Welcome back to Nerd and Geek University's Dragons of Tarkir Spoilers. Continuing from the last video, Wizards of the Coast spoiled a few more cards today on their site, and if you guessed it, Dragons, you would be right. The first card that we're going to talk about from the new set of spoilers is Shaman of Forgotten Ways. Shaman of Forgotten Ways is a human shaman creature with a casting cost of 1 green and 2 colorless for a 2-3 body. His ability allows you to tap the shaman to add 2 colorless mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool, but you can only spend this mana to play creature spells. The card also features the new formidable effect that states for 2 green and 9 colorless, if the creatures you control have a combined total of 8 or more power, then each player's life total becomes equal to the number of creatures they control. In limited play, Shaman of Forgotten Ways will be similar to Birds of Paradise or Noble Hierarch, producing 2 mana of any color in the form of a creature producing a mana card. The cost is higher than the before mentioned cards, but 2 mana of any color will help allow mana fixing earlier in the game, and the amount of mana he produces can help bigger creatures enter the field even up to 2 turns early. The Shaman also makes for a decent non-flying token blocker. In standard, this card could see some play with green token decks as well as Obzan decks that are popular in the current meta. This formidable effect, while expensive, can make interesting changes to the game for either better or worse. The Shaman could serve as a decent budget option in Modern for decks that want to run a Noble Hierarch but can't, as Noble Hierarch is roughly $70 per copy as of the 3rd of March in 2015. In EDH, this card has a lot of potential, due to the mana producing effect as well as the formidable effect, which again can swing games for better or worse. The next card we're going to be talking about is Arishan Sovereign. Arishan Sovereign costs 1 white and 5 colorless for a 6-6 flying dragon. Whenever the Sovereign dies, his ability allows you to place it on either the top or the bottom of your library. In limited play, this card is able to be placed back into play the next turn after he dies, of course, after paying the card's mana cost. When you consider the fact that this can come back to the field after it dies as many times as you want, as long as you pay its mana cost repeatedly, this card can help win you games. This card might have some modern play in Abzan decks as a budget option if that deck doesn't have a playset of Seed Rhino. In EDH, the Arishan Sovereign can be added to the color-appropriate dragon deck, building synergy around a few of the previous cards that have been spoiled that give bonuses to dragon creatures. The next dragon that we're going to talk about is Boltwing Marauder. Boltwing Marauder is another new dragon that costs 1 red, 1 black, and 3 colorless for a 5-4 flying dragon. His effect states that when another another creature enters the battlefield, any target creature gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. In limited, this can be a huge game-changing card, as it makes any one of your creatures bigger whenever you play another creature. So if you have a whole bunch of creatures in hand, play them and make the Marauder bigger to swing for games. Boltwing Marauder may see some slight standard play for those players playing a Rakdos Aggro or Rakdos Token strategy. He also has a decent synergy with the recently spoiled Thunderbreak Regent. As the Marauder gets bigger, your opponent will need to remove him, but it's going to cost them 3 life to do so. Once again in EDH, he can be added to any sort of dragon-themed deck in the appropriate colors, and could possibly see play in a token commander if you can find a way to incorporate him into the strategy. The next dragon that we're going to talk about is Harbinger of the Hunt. Harbinger of the Hunt costs 1 green, 1 red, and 3 colorless mana for a 5-3 dragon with flying. Harbinger has two activated mana abilities, the first being 1 red and 2 colorless to activate that deals 1 damage to each creature without flying. The second mana ability costs 1 green and 2 colorless to activate, and does 1 damage to each creature with flying. In limited play, these mana abilities make him very desirable for those that may go up against any 1-1 one -one tokens or even 2-2 two -two tokens. The only thing holding this dragon back, much like its counterparts, is his mana cost and his activated abilities there afterwards. If all goes well, by turn 6 he can kill both blockers made by Ajatai's summons that were spoiled early yesterday that would seek to block and destroy him. But after that, your mana is drained, leaving you no room to cast protective spells and leaving you at the mercy of your opponents. In standard, this card can be used in a red-green monsters deck as a main board to help against any decks that place many tokens on the battlefield at once, or even as a sideboard to any deck that has a red and green mana base. Like many of the other cards spoiling the Dragons of Tarkir set, in EDH this dragon can be added to any dragon-themed deck that has been mentioned many times before and synergizes well with the cards in this deck type. The next dragon spoiler we're talking about is Pristine Skywise. The card is 1 blue, 1 white, and 4 colorless for a 6-4 flying dragon. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you untap Skywise and it gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. In limited, this is a huge card as it gains protection from either half or more of your opponent's deck. If any new pump spells come out, it'll be even better in limited. In standard, the card could see some play in some Jeskai decks, but the mana cost is a bit high for them, but it still does offer them a nice exit strategy should the game run longer than normal. 
You can also pair it with something like Become Immense to really swing on your opponent, but then you're running Band Colors and Standard, and that probably isn't the best strategy if you're looking to win. The last of the Dragon Spoilers we have for today is the Necromaster Dragon. The Necromaster costs 1 black, 1 blue, and 3 colorless for a 4-4 flying dragon. Whenever the Necromaster deals combat damage to a player, you may pay 2 colorless mana. If you do, you put a 2-2 zombie creature token onto the battlefield under your control, and each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. In Limited, this is amazing, as it continuously makes you creatures as long as you pay for it, and it slowly gives you extra blockers and burns away what little cards your opponent had to begin with in their library. In Limited, decks are usually around 40 cards, and by turn 5, your opponent can already be down to 27 cards. You only need to attack a few times with this dragon at that point for this to be a great creature. In standard, this card could see play with Ashiok Nightmare Weaver to slowly eat away at an opponent's deck, which is definitely not something to underestimate. In modern, there are better options than this in most decks, but it could see some play in some mill decks, some zombie centered decks, and even a hybrid zombie mill deck. And of course, like a lot of the other dragons spoiled in Dragons of Tarkir, this card would fit into a dragon themed EDH. The last card of the day that we're going to be talking about is Ajitai's Command. Ajitai's Command is a new instant in Azarius Colors, costing 1 white, 1 blue, and 2 colorless. When you cast it, you get to choose two of its effects. Either you return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, or you gain four life, or counter target creature spell or draw a card. In the right limited deck, the first ability could see some play. Maybe you could return Silum Guard's Assassin back to the battlefield. The rest of the abilities are all good and limited, and any combination of those three is sure to help you pull ahead. If you play a deck in standard that uses cards like Battlewise Hoplite, Phalanx Leader, and any other sort of heroic and prowess build, this could be a good card for you. Personally, I like this card in Modern. When Modern is brought to mind, this card is comparable to Cryptic Command. While the two cards have different effects and costs, you can clearly see that this card is based around Cryptic Command and even the name is similar. Cryptic Command, counter target spell, while Ajitai's Command, counter target creature spell. Cryptic Command, return target permanent to its owner's hand. Ajitai's Command, return target creature card with converted mana cost to or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. They both let you draw a card, you get the point. If you're not made of money, this card makes a perfect budget replacement for Cryptic Command, the average price of which is around $40 per copy at the lowest price, at the time of making this video as of 3rd of March in 2015. What do you guys think of Dragons of Tarkir spoilers so far? Any of the new creatures or spell that you like in particular? Leave any thoughts you have in the comments section below. Remember to subscribe, and we will see you next time for more spoilers.